There is a song that say Baba yangu ana mali mingi ooz hasina zote mkononi fedha zote na mawedha mani mimi ni mwana wa mfalme mwana wa mfalme pamoja na Yesu ni mwana wa mfalme ni mwana wa mfalme mwana wa mfalme pamoja na Yesu ni mwana wa mfalme praise the lord nyinyi mnatakaje do you want us to sing or you want us praise the lord we enjoy this moment we are happy to see brother william and his wife we are happy to see the several esters in our midst. God bless you. How many of you are esters? Just lift up your hand. Oh, there is an Esther out there. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, the wife of Joshua, that is sister-in-law of, uh, of Sister Marianne. And we are happy to have two pastors here with us, right? Amen. We have our brother William. We have our brother Ken. We appreciate them. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord Jesus Christ for all this. And all the visitors uh, in our gates that we cannot be able to identify you name by name, but you've told us already. We appreciate you so much, Brother Ken, with your wife. We thank you, and we are happy to be here this morning. We, our fellowship is great, and Baba Yetu Nitajiri, he has many sons and many daughters. We are not the only one. And that's why we say last Sunday, we are destroying the partition that the, that house can say, oh, so you are my brother here. That's my brother. That's my sister. We are not trying to build some partition. No. Amen. We know all our brothers that Jesus Christ died for. And uh, let me tell you, this is what you are not going to do. If someone feels he can't fellowship with us, we cannot remove the grace. We pour more grace than person wherever you are going. We are not insecure. We are not removing no grace. We are adding more grace. I was even talking to another daughter of another brother. I say, what is happening with your father? Say, he only streams. I say, no, I will call him to tell him, no, you need to have some fellowship. You need to get some brother that agree with you uh, on your teaching and have fellowship. Sina Kinyongo. Amen. Praise the Lord. Watoto wa mungu ni wengi kila mahali. And uh, we are not removing grace. No, we can't. We cannot. Amen. We don't give grace. Jesus gives grace. Amen. 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 And the Bible says we behold the only son full of grace Amen. and glory. Amen. And then when Peter talked about grace, he said, let grace be multiplied. Amen. Now let me tell you the difference. He said, may the grace of the Lord be multiplied to you according to the knowledge of him. Amen. The more you know him, Amen. the more grace is multiplied. Amen. But let me tell you, that's not even your promise. No. He is talking about the grace to be multiplied. Yeah. But when Paul came, he said, the riches of grace in glory. Yeah. Now there is two grace. For them, they need grace to be multiplied. Yeah. For us, is riches of grace. Yeah. That's the difference. Amen. Yeah. And when we have grace, we minister grace. Yeah. We don't minister judgment. Oh. Because we know the one that comes with eyes like flame of fire he doesn't come to us Amen. no we are full of grace you cannot come with a person full of grace and you have got a voice like the voice of many waters you no, you can you cannot come with the feet like brass to the person who has grace from the head Amen. to the toe yes. what are your eyes like flame of fire coming to do with such a person Amen. you just have to pack off and go Amen. but the people that need grace to be multiplied are the same that peter says and the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus. Amen. They are waiting for grace to be brought to them at the revelation of Jesus. Amen. We are not waiting for grace. We are receiving grace. Riches. Riches of grace. In fact, the Bible says grace for grace. Amen. Have you ever read that scripture? Amen. Grace for grace. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are happy to see all of you. I want us to go straight to the scriptures. And uh, we are not going to begin on a note of teaching. No, we want to preach. Just a little praise the Lord. And uh, we want to be clear with our time. Let's go to the book of... Um, it 
if you are there. What is our scripture right there? I gave my scripture and I didn't write it down. So my mind is everywhere. We have Luke 24, 25 to 26. And then we have Colossians 6, 14. And of course, we'll have um, John 11. I can hear you saying we have many other scriptures. Yeah, we do. But we want to sort of deal with a few things here by the grace of God because of this day. We are dealing with two achievements of one death. Kifo kimoja, matokeo mawili tofauti. Two achievements of one death. Let's go to the book of Luke. When Jesus joined these people, I want you to look at what death meant to Israel and what that the same death means to us. Luke 24. I don't know that I've really recognized the abundance. I've really recognized uh, all of you. I think I have. Uh, we were just feeling if there are people in Amis who do not understand Swahili because of the limitation of our time. We want just to take one hour, 30 minutes in our service and then we break. So we don't want to have so much time going on. Because I strongly believe even your fellowship one to another is equally important. Just talking is equally important. So the fellowship does not uh, end with our service here. The fellowship goes all the way. Amen. Amen. Brother Alexander, God bless you. Good to see you again this morning. God bless you. Luke chapter 24 verse 25. Then he said unto them, who this Jesus, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all the prophets have spoken. Or not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. It means prophet had spoken about the death of Jesus Christ. And uh, there are people who are really surprised that Jesus is dead. Jesus was not surprised. But there are people who are surprised because of their expectation. But Jesus is saying you are fools. Prophet has spoken about the death of this man. Or not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That only brings him up to death and resurrection. Those are the things he told them. He never told them anything else. Because the Bible says he spoke to them things from the prophets concerning himself so if the prophet never said anything concerning jesus he never told them he didn't because this is we are dealing with god his son and his prophets that was the program so these people are surprised that jesus died in fact they're saying and we had this morning that how this man was supposed to die. I want you to look at the testimony of Caiaphas. So in reality, we say they never expected Jesus to die. Leave alone you. You didn't even have a promise that Jesus would die. The promise that was given in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 had already been plugged out. We were in darkness. We didn't even expect someone is going to die. But there were some people that expected someone to die. And they didn't know that aspect of the scripture. So Jesus comes and joins them. And he tells them, no, a part of the prophecy, Jesus was supposed to die, resurrect, and enter into his glory. When you talk about his glory, you talk about Moses and Elijah that appeared with him in glory. And you're supposed to enter in the glory of these two people and then come and visit Israel. Yes. We just want to we just want to preach, we don't want to teach. Or we want to teach and preach. Listen to uh, one man, this man called Caiaphas. <laughs> Eleven forty nine. And okay, verse 47. Then he gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? 
For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all the men will believe on him. You see that spirit? Is that spirit that does not begin today? If we let him alone, all men will believe him. So let us do something. We can set up a scandal, or we can simply dehumanize him, humiliate him before all. But I want to tell you, when they took Joseph, and say we are getting rid of Joseph. They were only assisting God to bring Joseph in his position. Yeah. That's what they were doing. Yeah. They didn't realize throwing him in the pit and selling him, they are helping God fulfill a prophecy. So I want to tell you, your destiny is not in the hands of a man. It's not in the hands of a man. Even God says, I'm not going to use love to bring Joseph to his position. No. I'm going to use malice, Amen. hatred, Amen. enemy, Amen. and jealousy. Yeah. And tell them, you jealousy, Amen. you malice, Amen. you hatred, Amen. take Joseph to, to his position. Amen. So when the malice come and everything, don't worry. Amen. Amen. God is taking you. Amen. Everything is subject to God. Amen. When they tell you, they communicate you, that is nothing. Amen. 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 No one has a power to put you in the blood. Yeah. Yes. And no one has a power to take you out of the blood. Amen. If it's Jesus that will put you in the blood, it will take Jesus Amen. to take you out of the blood. Amen. And when Jesus puts you in the blood, Amen. it is for once and forever. Amen. He doesn't put you and take you out. Amen. If there is a blood someone can take and take you out, take out now. Amen. If there is blood someone can take you out, let him take you out now. Amen. But the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the Bible says those he loved, he loved up to the end. Amen. Jesus doesn't make bad decisions. No. We are telling Jesus that when you chose me, you made a good decision. Amen. No man is going to an Christian as me. No, Jesus, thank you. You made the right decision. I'm just following you. When I tell you the meeting is now over, you say, now why? <laughs> and you are saying, amen. He says, 14, 47, if we let him thus, all men will believe on him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. It was insecurity. Amen. Amen. Right? Yes. It was insecurity. Yes. If we continue, not that miracles are wrong. Uh -uh. Not that the people are not getting healed. Yes. Not that the people are not getting saved. Not that people are not moving closer to God. Yes. But we are so insecure. That's right. oh. Hallelujah. And they realized when they crucified Jesus, mm. the death of Jesus was going to bring death to death. Mm. The death of Jesus killed death. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now consider, he's now telling them, now consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Huh? This man understood there is a nation that can only be liberated by death Amen. of another man. And this man was quite ahead more spiritual than Simon Peter. Simon Peter, when he's rebuking Jesus, who said you are going to die? Caiaphas has already understood yes. by prophecy that one man has to die for a nation. Did you realize these people are confining the death of Jesus to the nation only? Not to the whole world. As much as John had already announced, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But now this man is saying, no, this nation is under judgment. The only person that can save it is the death of one person. And the Bible say, he didn't say that because he was spiritual, but because he was in that office. God visited the office to give this prophecy. And this taking note of himself, but being a high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. You may be seated. Then we, <laughs> we come and find Peter in, in Acts chapter 3. He is condemning a people for killing the prince of life. Because the death of Jesus 
as far as Israel was concerned, was criminal. And that's why he indicted them. You have killed the prince of life. You've taken with your dirty hands and have killed him. But you, you remember that. And he condemned them so much for killing Jesus. But when Paul comes, he says the following. You know, people come to church, especially on a Friday, in what is called Easter, and then they are told the passion of Christ. They see nails going through the hands of Jesus, and they say, oh, that is not us. That is not us, oh, what you are. No! Paul, tell us what the death of Jesus means to you. Galatians 6, 24. <laughs> Is it 624? Is there even 24 anyway? 614. No. Just give me. Just give me some time to, to take it out. I think I was moving very fast to this scripture. Sorry? Sorry? Where Paul says, I glory in the cross. 36? 614. Yes, 614. God forbid that I should glory, save in the, in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So let someone Peter come to take the first service and condemn people for crucifying Jesus. Let Paul come and stand and say, to me the cross of Jesus, I glory. Amen. The cross of Jesus Christ, I glory. Amen. And I am not saying it was wrong for Jesus to die, but I'm saying my glory is in that cross of Jesus. So Paul is looking at the death of Jesus and he's not even calling any man guilty. He's telling men, you are guilty of one thing, of sin. Not of crucifying Jesus. But Israel was guilty of crucifying Jesus. You are not guilty of crucifying Jesus. You are guilty of being born a sinner. Now, when the cross has come to take your sin, then you glory in the cross. Amen. Amen. And that's why in the book of Zechariah chapter 14, and chapter 12, and chapter 13, 12 and 13, it says, they shall look at him and cry. We look at him crucified and rejoice. Amen. For him, they see him, and they say, you mean, you came and we killed you? How cruel can man be? But for us, we look at Jesus and say, you mean? God has no question. God cannot challenge me. His loss cannot challenge me. Then I rejoice in Christ because the cross is glory to me. But to them, they are criminalized. They are told you shouldn't have killed the Messiah. Because they were not expecting him to come and die. You know, in the, in the letter of John, not in the gospel of John, when Jesus said, I'm going to die, they asked, why is this man saying he's going to die? If he's calling himself Christ, we know Christ abideth forever. How come this man is saying he's going to die? So that is one part that was blocked from them. They didn't understand he was supposed to die. Yet there were promises in the Bible where well, your prince has come. There were promises in the Bible that said Jesus is going to die. But they never believed because they didn't understand why a king should come and die. While in the Bible 
God had told David, I'm going to give you a son whose kingdom there shall never be an end. So how can he come and say he's going to die? Now, the reason why they did not the death, they did not this death is going to benefit two different people. Okay. I want to really watch on my time. If my time is up, we shall stop there. Jesus needed to die not to destroy death, but to destroy the power of death. Amen. And death had no power. Because death existed before Adam and Eve partook of the tree of knowledge of good and bad. Amen. When God came down, he told them, do not eat of this tree lest you do what? Amen. So death already existed. Yes. So there was death here and Adam was here and his wife very much alive. Amen. And death was so harmless. Amen. Death could not even kill nobody. Amen. And I want to tell you if there was no sin. Death Brother Simon could die. And you people come for the funeral, rejoicing, saying, the servant of God called death has come to take him to another place. And we would just eat. But the sin is what makes death a sad thing. And Jesus said, I will not destroy death. I will destroy the power of death. Praise the Lord. Amen. Death is there and it's not active. Yes. Because Paul comes to whom death has been defeated. And mentions something that will also be mentioned when we shall be dealing with the mystery of his will. Amen. Then he says, death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? Amen. So death has been bundled and taken back to where it was. Amen. Harmless. Amen. No weapon. Amen. It is like a plastic thing. Amen. You can't even do anything with it. Amen. And I want to tell you, then death has to die. Amen. Because death has nothing to feed it. Amen. Sin feeds death. Amen. And sin keeps death alive. Amen. Amen. Sin gives death alive. And when there is no more sin, what happens to death? Thank you, Jesus. It dies. Amen. 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 So death has death too. Yes. Even in the book of Revelation says, and the death and the hell were cast in the lake of fire. You mean? Yes. I should stand there. To escort death to death. Amen. And God said, death one day we shall come to your funeral. Amen. But we shall not say, we loved you, but someone else loved you more. We shall just stand and say, death, you mean you could die? When you kill sin, you kill death. Amen. 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 And Jesus said, I will not kill death. I will kill the power of death. And the death itself can be bundled to go back to where it was. Where it was right there. And Adam is alive. And this death was only going to kill once. Because death is one. Sin is one. No, when we got the righteousness of God, when Brother Ken will be praying in our last service, when you pray for the knees, come with that boldness. Amen. And understand, once righteousness has been achieved and acquired, 
by the death of Jesus, your standing has been restored. Amen. When your standing has been restored, your state cannot affect your standing. What do I mean by state and standing? State is like your condition. Standing is your position. Your position does not change. But your condition will change over and over again. Now we are not living by our condition in the world. We are living by our position in the world. And your position, there is no one that can take it away. Because your position was given to you by God. Now, when you talk about the position, don't confuse condition. The Bible says, now we are sons of God. Amen. It doesn't matter what happens, where you are. Now you are a son of God. Amen. But yet it does not appear how you look like. Amen. That is in the letter of John. So this death is staying hanging somewhere. That death has no power to come over a human being. And God, can you imagine God was never threatened by the existence of death in the Garden of Eden? Who created death? Who created death? I thought it is the devil. I thought it's Adam who brought death. The Bible says, by one man death entered. So death was already there looking for a channel to enter. And this man must have gone there and activated death. Amen. And when he went to partake, to partake of the tree, death became alive. Amen. And when death became alive, it says, I'm going to the person that activated me. Amen. And that was Adam. But now when Adam, listen to me, when Adam touched the fruit, he touched death. And when he touched death, death touched God. There is no end to this. He touched the fruit, the fruit touched death, and the death touched God. And when death was now coming out, God was also coming out. We have both been touched. You know why? That is my son. If you touch that man, there was another law. And this law was called the law of resurrection. Amen. And the law of resurrection was higher than life itself. Amen. Now there are two forms of life here. There is life before death and there is another life after death. Amen. Now the life that comes after death cannot die. Amen. There was a life that death would kill. And there was another life that death cannot touch. You are, a pro, you are operating under the second life. The first death was not as powerful as the death that you are, as the, as the life that you are under today. So for God to show the power of another life, he put death between this life and the other life. So the person who crosses from this life to touch death, death and life are interconnected. You can't touch life without touching death. And we can't touch death Without touching life. Amen. So when this man had life in himself. And he was living. And death was there. Now when he's going to touch death by sin. Death is going to touch another law of God. Called love. Amen. And the love is going to come down. Amen. And the love is going to tell death. My law is true. If any man would partake of this tree, he would die. I didn't lie. But you didn't know the man that was supposed to die. Amen. <laughs> the problem you didn't realize, the man I meant would die after touching the tree. That man is me. Amen. 
give him a hand clap. He said it's me that he placed myself there. Amen. The day you touch that tree, you will die. That is true. Now, the man standing with his life here. And then there is the tree of knowledge here that has got death. Beyond this death, there is another life that is called resurrection. Now, these are two lives. And you needed to partake of both of them. <laughs> and Adam partook of this life. And he felt it is really nice. And then he was told, you know what? There is another thing that goes together with what you have. It is called death. And death was harmless. Because sin had not, the law had not been broken. The law of God had not been transgressed about. Then he touched it. And then he gave death life. And then death became a giant. And he said, I'm going to kill you. He didn't realize when death is coming, below death, laid alive forever more. Laid a life that can never die. Amen. That life could not be realized. Amen. Because death was the partition Amen. that separated this life and that life. Amen. According to you, which one is super life? Life after death. Amen. Life after translation. Yes. Life after resurrection. I want to tell you, life after being quickened from the life of sin. Amen. There is no greater life than that life. Amen. Because that life, death cannot touch it. Amen. When Jesus entered into that life, he told Mary, don't touch me. When he appeared before God, when he came down, he said, come and touch me. You can't defile him. You can't bring death. Death has been paralyzed Amen. because of this day. Amen. Death died because of this day. Amen. 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 The Bible says, by one man, death, sin entered the world. Not by one woman. One man. When God came, when Paul came, he said, by one man. So this idea that every, tell me, every grave, every siren goes, goes by death is not scriptural. We say scriptures only. By one man, death entered. Someone will say by a woman has an agenda. And when we question him, we are called heretic. We are only saying the Bible say by one man. It doesn't say by one woman. So if there is any grave and cemetery, any prison house and hospital, the man was supposed to be blamed. And that's why Jesus did not come as a woman. Because it was by one man. So it was a man who came to die. The very death of Jesus says the person that was guilty was a man. It was not a woman. That's the truth of the matter. By one man, death and not by one woman. You have an agenda against women for you to stand and say, Amen. Women, until you can come up with your son to stand at a junction to find out how many mistakes, traffic mistakes are done by women versus women versus men. What's the problem with you? What did the women do to you? When I call the Kukose and Nini, how do you not talk and I'm Totoako Musimama Kwa Junction? Kazi yenu tu ni kujua mwanamuka na mwanamume nani yako na makosa kwa barabara. Yani umemtoa mpaka kanisani. What is wrong with you? By one man sin ended. Not by a woman. Amen. 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 By one man. And that's how that one man died. He had a brother that was touched. By the feeling of the infirmity of another brother. Like I said, I can't be alive here and my brother is dead. Amen. 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 So true. Amen. 
I was seven. I was uh, maybe how many years? I must have been 12 for a uh, few, few years in life. And uh, I had an issue with my brother. The competition that comes up among brothers. And at that time, I was staying with my niece. Not niece. Not my niece. Cousin. cousin thank you. How did you know? <laughs> my cousin sister, not of my aunt. And with the auntie of my father. So my brother, what he did, he sort of took a machete to scare me off. So my, one of my niece, my, the, what, what did he call her? Yes. My cousin rushed to go and talk to my uncle brother, to my father, that the mother wants to cut Simon with a machete. So what happened? This uncle came. He didn't have children, and he had something against us. And it was raining heavily. So what did he do? He took my brother and took him outside in a pool of water and started beating him. Started beating him. Now, I can't tell you what happened to me. The only thing I remember, I was with my brother inside the pool of water being beaten. That's the only thing I remember. The next thing I remember, I was inside the house shaking and wet. And my, uh, my cousin and the, uh, the auntie of my father were laughing. So I needed to ask them, what happened? It is my brother that was being beaten. How, why am I wet? <laughs> then they told me, my brother was being beaten hard with a big staff. And I just say, Sulu. And I ran inside the pool of water. And that's how I started getting the beating. Then I realized I'm a kinsman. I realized I couldn't take my brother being beaten anymore. And I went out and I stood there. Hallelujah. I thought about it the other day and I cried like a baby. Because I couldn't explain. They told me when you saw your brother being beaten, you couldn't take it anymore. You said, Sulu. Sulu means watch out, Mimi. Come and embire. <laughs> Let me also die. When I went in there, I was beaten. I remember him lifting. You doctors should tell me what was happening with me. I lost myself. I just remember this. The next time, I remembered I was seated in a corner crying. And also surprised, why am I crying? Why am I wet? It was my brother. Then they said, no, you couldn't take it anymore. You had to run there in the water and be beaten with your brother. Now, when Adam committed sin, Jesus couldn't take it anymore. Amen. He said, I'm going also. And based on that, God instituted the laws of redemption. Amen. And then he gave to Israel. He says, your brother is poor. Another one that is like him. Amen. Can go and die. And once he dies, I can't ask Philemon. If Jesus has died for you, God has no scripture, has no power to ask you anything. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It is so sad. People think God is against them. How can he be against you on earth? And he's the one who provided the son. And he said, son, go. That death only kills once. And once you die, you are going to touch another life. When you tell John in the book of Revelation, I was once dead, but I'm alive forevermore. Yeah. And any person who ever died, once he touches life, he is alive forevermore. Yeah. And God cannot do anything about it. Yeah. <sighs> Death was supposed to die once. Death was not supposed to die twice. It was not supposed to kill so wrong. It was not supposed to kill twice. Kill Jesus, and after killing Jesus, starts now looking for you to kill again. What happened to death? Death died. Amen. Never to kill again. Amen. The justice of God was fulfilled. Amen. And God was satisfied. And death went back to its place in mobile condition. 
Death cannot move from that place. Because the law of death does not work to a group of people. What does death mean to you? That death cannot come again from that place to look for you. Amen. Now think about it. Because by death of Jesus, you can live forevermore. Amen. You used to get worried once in a while that someone will come and tell you, you'll go to hell and you shake. Nowadays, Amen. when he tells you that, you're wondering. Now, don't you know what you talk about? Amen. Why do you think I'm going to die? Amen. Jesus died Amen. once and for all. Amen. And his death fulfilled the laws of God. Amen. We are talking about death that immobilized death. Death that he killed death. The only thing you need to do, believe it. Amen. And that's why faith is important in matters like this. Amen. That believe death died too. Amen. When Adam touched sin, he touched death. Then death touched another part of God. Death touched another life that had not been manifested on earth yet. I can come on and ask you what's Amen. Amen. There was another part of life that had not been manifested on earth. Life after death had not been manifested. Amen. But the life without death had been manifested. And God had these two forms of life, two sides of the same coin. When death was released through Adam with all his children. When Adam died, another part of life came. Amen. And that life is a life that has no end. So God told life, I want to, death, I want to tell you how I'm connected to this man. Amen. I'm connected to this man by something called L-O-V-E. You know why? He's my son. I'm connected to this man. So you did not hear me right. When I said, the day you partake of it, you will die. That person who's supposed to die is supposed to be me. So, death, I invite you to come and kill me so my son can never die. You come, I'm availing myself, and please kill me. And kill me in such a way that I'll be so dead. So dead that death will never be required anymore to a human being. That no person, when death is coming for you, I want to give an example. And death becomes stubborn. Death should ask itself, All the law is fulfilled. Amen. God has fulfilled his own law. Amen. I am paralyzed. Amen. And that's why the Bible says that he that believeth in him Amen. has passed from death into temporal life. Into life. When that life has come to you, it will take death to take it away. And that life, death cannot touch it. Because the life you received, it after... After he died and resurrected. Amen. Before he died, you could die and he dies. But after he resurrected, you can't die. Amen. 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 
Is that true? Yes. Amen. That after he died, that's why where Paul says in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, we do not know Christ after the flesh. Because the flesh of Jesus didn't come to us. It came to Israel. But the Jesus that came to us, he had already overcome death. Now your life does not go beyond. So you cannot be addressed in the Gospels. Because the Gospel is the flesh. And the Bible says, we do not know Jesus after the flesh. So if you don't know Jesus after the flesh, how do you know Jesus? After the spirit. And then the Bible says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. When you come to me and tell me about the thunders, first of all, explain that scripture. Don't turn personal. You are my sologist, that's big English. <laughs> My sologist mean people that hate, detest, and fear debate. So we'll turn personal. I'm saying, God, Christ when he died and resurrected. Yes. The Bible says, he that died and resurrected, sin can never reign over him. Amen. Because sin could only reign before the man died. Amen. But when he died, he came out in the newness of life. Now, sin can never touch such a person. Amen. The person I'm talking about, I'm talking to really you. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about your flesh. No. Your flesh profiteth nothing. And it will pass away. Amen. But the really you has no death dwelling inside of you. Amen. No. Tell me how you tell me, how you can tell me that we don't have rapturing faith. I want to tell you when he died, that death does not need anything additional. Amen. It is enough. Amen. It doesn't need anything for you to do. If there is something you have to do, then we ask God, how can you give us a sacrifice that is not sufficient Amen. to save me, heal me, fill me with the Holy Ghost, Amen. give me the gifts, resurrect me and translate me. How can you give such a sacrifice? Amen. Then Jesus Christ will answer me and point me to Ephesians 1. He has blessed us with all Amen. with all Amen. spiritual blessing Amen. in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. Amen. What are you going to do with that scripture? Amen. What are you going to do with the scripture that says all spiritual blessings when you present to me a scriptural Elijah? When you tell me I need Elijah, I tell you, pull that scripture that is saying he has blessed us with the all. Amen. 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 To Amba at a wind in Bali, we ask someone, you said he's supposed to present who? Elijah. Ask him a simple question. To do what? Read for me Matthew 11. Matthew 11, does it say? Okay. What does it say? For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Now you people are not you are not reading that scripture as a preacher. You are a preacher. Read it again. <laughs> for all the prophets. Uh -uh. For all <laughs> the prophets and the law were until John. after that. <laughs> and if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Not if you'll receive him. If you'll receive it. Because he was supposed to come in the spirit of Elijah. That's how God is saying if you can receive it. And the Bible is very clear. It says all 
prophets. The prophets. <laughs> now, it does not say the prophets. It says all, all the prophets, the prophets were until John. Until John. Uh, all the prophets were until John. Repeat. All the prophets were until John. Mr. Marian, that scripture in the book of John, what does it say? The kingdom of God servereth and the violence shall take the kingdom by force. And you know you are not the one that is taking the kingdom by force. You are not promised a kingdom. But there are people. All the prophets from Adam to Malachi. God at sundry times and diverse manners spoke to us. Who are the us? The Jews. God spoke to the Jews by the prophets. And as in these last days, Amen. spoken to us through his son. Now, after the son has been, after the son has come, there would never be any other prophet because the prophet were pointing to the son. Yes. <laughs> Why would another prophet come to point people to who? If there will be another prophet coming, it will be to our people that never received him when he came. Yes. And that's when Jesus said, I will send you prophets and scribes whom you shall kill in your synagogue. When he uses the word synagogue, you realize that is a Jewish ground. Yes. And when he says you are going to kill them, then you go to Revelation 11, you realize Moses and Elijah will be killed. God at sundry times spoke to us by the prophets. Prophets is all from when he prophesied in Genesis 3, 15. And all the prophets up to Malachi. That is God and his prophets. Yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is God and his son. Genesis to Malachi, God and his prophets. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, God with his son. And when God has come with his son, nothing is placed beyond the son. Why? He was the promise. Amen. Say amen if that's true. Amen. That was the promise. Amen. And when John came, Jesus said, of all born of women, there has never been one born like John. Now people may come and say, they are greater than Enoch. But when they are asked, is it the Catholic Church or a woman? They say it may be a Catholic Church or a woman, and is greater than Enoch. That's very true. <laughs> you are saying you are greater than Enoch, and you are saying it may be this or that. There has never been such a prophet in the Bible. Who said it could be this or that? Never. You need to ask the people to whom prophets were given until they didn't even believe Daniel was a prophet. You know why? Qualification of a prophet in the Old Testament was to whom the word of God came to. And the book of Daniel does not say the word of the Lord came to Daniel. That's why they call Daniel just a wise writer. Daniel was not a prophet by birth like Jeremiah. He was a prophet by the visitation of Gabriel. Elisha was a prophet by anointing. And of all the prophets, 
There had never been a prophet like Moses. Don't come with some magicians in your hand telling people when you stand and tell people, look here, all my family are Muslims. And the people, no, he said all my people are Muslims. Brother Ken and Brother William, when you tell the people, all my people are Muslims, and they want to question you, you also say, now don't talk to me about Branham. What do you want us to talk about? I want to ask you, when he said this, what did he mean? <laughs> Moses, God came down and put a petition. He said in the book of Numbers, chapter 13, if there will be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, shall speak to him <coughs> through visions and dreams. But Moses is not so. I speak to him mouth to mouth. He didn't even say mouth to ear. And he said for Moses, he will see my similitude. So when someone comes and claims I'm Moses, my friend, just walk away. Because number one is ignorant of the nature and the category Moses was. Yes. Moses never saw a vision. Yes. Moses never saw a dream. Yes. And when he comes to Numbers that, uh, is it 18, he, he says, God shall raise up a prophet like an unto me. Whoever that did not listen to him, he will die. Mm. And Jesus, show me one dream. Show me one vision. Never. Because he was a prophet like an unto Moses. Amen. Live alone a vision and a dream, and I saw America smoldering in ashes. And throws that thing everywhere. When 9-11 is attacked, people are also standing on the pulpit saying this is what he said. Because he's not a prophet like an aunt to Moses. Yes. There is no way he could be. Yes. Moses came to point them to another one. So that when he comes, they can say he's exactly like Moses. This is him. These were indicators and marks on the Messiah to be identified by Jesus. Amen. And that's why that Moses is very instrumental in the first coming and the second coming of the Lord Jesus has nothing to do with the rapture coming. Let me tell you something you've never thought about. Did you know in the days of Jesus, there were two Elijahs? You say, hmm, you're nine again. This Elijah of Mount Transfiguration could not appear to Jesus until Elijah John died. During the times of Jesus Christ, first coming and second coming lived in that day. Amen. 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 Yes. Jesus had to separate them by his own death. If he never died, he wouldn't have separated the first coming and the second coming. Amen. All those events were present. What do I mean, brothers? Matthew, I have no time, I just have to refer. Matthew chapter 16. Who do people say, I, the son of man, am? Who? The son of man that has come. Some say you are Jeremiah. Others say you are John who has resurrected. Others say you are one of the prophets. Some of them thought he's third prophet. When you tell an Israeli that prophet, that is Deuteronomy 18. That prophet that was so great that they were waiting for. Amen. And then he said, who do you say I am? I want to get somewhere. Say, thou art Christ the son of man. Another translation says that should come in the world. Thou art Christ. There was the first coming revealed to Peter. In Matthew 16. Matthew 16 alone was the first coming understood by disciples. Amen. That this is the one that was promised to come. Mm -hmm. All of them. So when Jesus moves and says, they are going to kill me, Simon Peter took him aside. And they say, what are you You've said you are the one we've been waiting for. 
And that's what the questions of Peter was, is this the time you are going to restore? Because these are the candidates of restoration. Something had been taken away from them that needed to be restored. Nothing was taken away from you. So you are not a candidate of restoration. Restoration to what? To apostolic faith. Give me one scripture that says you will be restored to apostolic faith. Malachi 4 is not even apostolic. So how can you say Malachi will come to restore? And Malachi is not even an apostle. Now, what is God going to do here? Then Jesus Christ rebukes Simon Peter. He tells him, after Simon Peter has had a, a revelation, that who, who gave him? You don't want that kind of baptism. That you have God today, tomorrow is also the devil. Are you Saul? That the Bible says Saul prophesied and then the demons also entered Saul. What, what is wrong with you Saul? Today you say you believe William Branham that says you do not have to stab a brother in his back. And then you can stand and gossip him and kill his influence. You are not even a believer of that Branham. When you say you cannot kill someone's influence. You are not even a believer of Branham. That's why. Oh. Isn't it? Yeah. That you want now to put this person up before everyone. But we say we are not going to do that. Yeah. I want to tell you I can't do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No. Amen. That's why. Amen. Let me just say this one in one. Did you call him? Yes, I called him on Monday. I told him, preach Jesus. Yes. I told him, preach Jesus. Don't preach a man. I cannot even preach Jesus. You on my pulpit, never. Preach Jesus. Amen. And we ended, I told him, let's end it like this. How is your family? Your children are okay? That's how we ended. <laughs> preach Jesus Christ. Amen. You now have no even time to tell you why Elijah and Moses are connected to the first coming and to the second coming and the reason why? You know Moses and Elijah were meeting for the first time. You can calculate the events between when Moses lived and Elijah is hundreds of years apart. But when Jesus came, they came. And they didn't come when Jesus was in flesh. When Jesus touched the glory, he touched where these people lived. They had to come. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9, and they spoke to him about the death he was going to fulfill in Jerusalem. Have you ever asked yourself what Elijah and Moses were telling Jesus? The book of Luke says they told him how he's going to accomplish his death in Jerusalem. Then from that time, Jesus started talking about his death. Why are you looking at me like you are surprised? I asked a friend of mine, you are the one taking the people around and saying this. Did you also tell your church you were given three million shillings when you went to Europe? I asked him point blank, did you tell them you are given three million shillings when you went to Europe for your church building? You told me yourself. I hope you also told them. Now why, why is that a problem? I just wanted to mention a little bit of what we talked. That we also said, did you also tell your church you were given three million with the brothers out there? Now, me is out to just summon Makosa. Can you not us to do it in a Kisa? Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't go in those things. Preach Jesus. Amen. I'm just trying to say that to know that I'm aware of every yes. and everything. But it means zero to me. Jesus took my death. Amen. 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 
and I'm only going to manifest things that pertains to life. Amen. And things that it becomes a hindrance to my life, I'll speak against it. Amen. But I will never speak against a person. I'll speak against a system. Amen. Because what imprisons people is not people, it is a system. Amen. And the system is what God is going to destroy. Amen. God is not going to destroy a man, he's going to destroy a system. If you are found in the system, then you will pass away. <laughs> Jesus in um, Luke chapter 20 verse 9 verse 20 verse, you know people who don't gossip they will not talk to another person about you they will call you they will call you and talk to you but the people, people, people who gossip I've got to tell can I tell you the kind of demon they have Hamalakite you know the demon of Hamalak? When David has left Ziglag, yes. eh? yes. has left Ziglag and has gone to fight a war in the Philistines, the Bible says Amalek came and took the children and took the wives and burned the houses. When David has been released from the army, when he comes, he realizes this man, Then David was like, What are you talking about, Amalek? Amalek, did I take you for lunch? Yeah. Amalek, did I drive you up to your homestead? Didn't we leave Eldorado at five and stay in your homestead up to eleven talking about these things and you never call me what you are calling me? Amalek, what is wrong with you? Sorry. <laughs> because Amalek was attacking the children of Israel and the Bible says, remember how Amalek came. He came against you while you were tired and thirsty and hungry and never feared the Lord. And he targeted the old and the tired and those who are still behind. But Amalek cannot come. He plays nasty. And don't allow Amalek to help you. Don't play nasty. Amalek will not face you. Even if you spend three more days calling him, he will never pick your call until you go back home. You are waiting for him. So you sit down, he will never. But when he stands there, he will come and talk. Now, I just want to say, I am aware. Amen. I'm aware of everything. But you are saying, Jesus Christ is enough. Amen. 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 The Bible says here, Jesus said, and it came to pass about eight days. Now, verse 27. But I tell you of truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Matthew 7, Matthew 26, 16 says, there'll be some staying, standing here that will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. Amen. Then it came to pass after an eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and clistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem. The Bible tells us what they were talking about. They were talking to him about the details of his death in Jerusalem. If you follow Matthew 17, he stands and says, Likewise shall the Son of Man... Let me just give you something. When the disciples saw Elias, they came to say, We've seen you transfigured with Elias. Why do Pharisees say Elias had to come first? So all the Israelis knew Elias, once he comes, finished. Nothing more. Amen. Did you understand? Amen. That's why they say it. Why did they say Elias has to come first? They were not even waiting for who? Elijah. No, they were not waiting for Jesus. They were waiting for Elijah first. Amen. And that's why when they saw him and Jesus is here, they're saying, why do Pharisees, now quoting Malachi 4, why do Pharisees say Elias must first come? And Jesus said, is a continuation answering that question. They say Elijah must first come, 
and restore all. That's true. But I tell you, Elias has come and have done doing what they listed. Then the Bible says they understood he's talking about John the Baptist. That part was what was fulfilled at that time. But there was another Elijah who was supposed to come. They couldn't get it. Because the children of Israel never believed there is another future time for them until when Jesus Christ died and resurrected. It was supposed to be the end. Oh God. Amen. When John came, it was supposed to be the end of all the prophecy. That's why Jesus said there has never been one born of women like John. But he that is least in the, in the kingdom is greater than him. Amen. The nation, according to Caiaphas, was waiting for a man to die for a nation, not to die for the world. Why would this man die? He was supposed to die because the whole nation was guilty. And he was supposed to pay for the sin these people had done. And that's why there was a promise. In the book of Isaiah, that he would die. Isaiah talks about the death of Jesus Christ, a servant. But the disciples didn't see it. And that's why Jesus tells them, you fools, slow of heart. Now I want to ask you a question. Had John been believed by all Israel, would the kingdom of God commence on earth at that time? Yes. Because there would be nothing else they are waiting for. It was only John, after John, the Messiah. After the Messiah, the kingdom, period. Could we be saved? Yes, but not as a body of Christ, but as the nation relying on the righteousness of Israel that comes by the law. Because God gave them the law to introduce a righteousness, but he gave us grace to introduce a righteousness. Amen. Now you are coming would be locked away. You would come in as it is written in Zechariah 8.23, holding on the garment of a Jew. And in that day, turn men out of the nations and the languages. When it uses the word turn, it is nations that are meant or implied. That's the number that is talking about the nations. So we would be saved, but not as a body of Christ. We would be saved depending on Israel. And then depending on Israel... That would only take us up to the gospel, death and resurrection. There would have never been a period of 2,000 years. For what purpose? 2,000 years is not even connected to Israel. That's why they don't have anything happening to them. Because they were given 490 years. And when Jesus came, he came exactly after 483. When he rode in Jerusalem. Tell the daughter of Zion, thy king has come. He was coming as a king to begin the last seven years. When they rejected him, he postponed. And the things that he was freely giving them, giving them he put it into the mysteries of the kingdom. Amen. That's why Matthew chapter 12, they called him Belezebub. Matthew chapter 13, he took the word and put it in the mystery. And then he started talking about the mysteries of the kingdom. Amen. Now the kingdom that was supposed to come to them has now taken another form called the mysteries of the kingdom. Amen. The person who has to reveal that has to be Jesus while he's introducing the kingdom to them. We were not promised a kingdom. Amen. We are promised a heaven. Amen. And that secret was hid. No one knew. No one even knew the purpose of the heaven before you came. Amen. I was listening to a preacher the other day. He told me, he was saying on YouTube, he met uh, a certain rabbi, no, a lady, who goes to the synagogue in the United States and ask this lady, are you people waiting for the kingdom? The lady, are you people going to heaven? She asked to do what? <laughs> it looks 
those hilarious. But that's true, they don't have that program. There has to be another people on earth with a program to go to heaven to benefit from single death of Jesus Christ. He died to cleanse heaven and to cleanse the earth. Clear the earth for Israel and heaven for you. They didn't know there was a heaven. They knew heaven was for God and the angels. But now I want to tell you not only that. The Bible says we are the citizens of heaven. We are ambassadors of the earth. And for heaven, God created you. If there would never be you, there would never be heaven. Oh my God. Amen. The Bible says we are, that is Philippians 3.20. Our citizenship is in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We are the ambassadors of Jesus. Amen. Who is an ambassador? Ambassador is a person that has been given, supported, given a power and authority to go and serve in another country on behalf of his government. Amen. And when he speaks, that is the government speaking. Amen. But there comes a time when his tenure comes to an end. And then he's recalled. Go back to Kenya. Amen. And I'm telling you, when we got saved, our time on the earth came short. Amen. We only became ambassadors. Amen. When our time will come to an end, either through death or translation, we shall go. Amen. And the Bible says, if this earthly tabernacle will be dissolved, we have another one, eternal Lord on earth, but in heaven, Amen. where we are looking for the coming of the Lord. Amen. You are heavenly people. Yes. You come to the earth to fill earthly human experiences. Yes. But your origin, you came from heaven. And that is a right. Amen. Not a privilege. Amen. It is a right. And that's why Jesus died. So that one death can benefit the heavenly people. And the earthly people. Amen. Who are you? I'm heavenly. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I was reading another scripture in the book of Colossians. Should be chapter 1. It says, you are complete in him. Amen. Mm. Mm. And we are complete in him. I was like, you Bible, sometimes you don't tell us the truth. <laughs> but Elijah is supposed to come and restore us to the... Why would you tell me I'm complete in him? So what will, Elijah, what will Elijah come to do if I'm complete in him? And the Bible is asking me, that's what I'm asking you. Amen. What will Elijah come to do when you are complete in him? Amen. So I was asking the Bible, how can I become perfect? Amen. Then the Bible tells me in Ephesians 4, Amen. when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And then it also went ahead and say, for the edification of the saints. No, for the perfecting of the saints. I love it. Can you listen? Oh, I'm trying to traumatize. Why are you forcing Elijah here? When a perfection is already said, it is here. God trusted the gifts when he went up. And he sent the gift, say, I'm looking for perfection. But here is the material. Here is the ministry. You are going to be perfected by the fivefold ministry. When he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. If you want Elijah to perfect you, my friend, remove Ephesians 4. If you remove Ephesians 4, then actually, then we look for an alternative. That's why. But if Ephesians 4 is here, and there are ministers here, four of them, maybe five, maybe even more that are still coming up. Amen. So long as those guys are here, perfection is guaranteed. Yeah. And they're not going to, let me tell you how they're going to perfect you. They're not going to perfect you to say on your faith add virtue. No. <laughs> they are going to perfect you by preaching to you the completeness of Jesus and you by faith you conduct perfection you are going to be baptized in a perfect body by one spirit we are baptized in his body by one spirit you are baptized in perfection 
They are not going to give you anything to do. People are given something to do is Israel. I can hear somebody tell me something about the, 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 the seven virtues. On your faith, on your virtue, knowledge. knowledge, on your knowledge, patience, patience, or oh, you've mixed it, you don't even have to care. <laughs> on your temperance, <laughs> godliness, <laughs> on your godliness, <laughs> brotherly, on your brotherly kindness. <laughs> now I will preach to you the edge of charity. When all the wall has been removed, then you will see that is the true edge of charity. There, there is no husband, no wife, no brother, no sister. All the people gathered in Christ Jesus in the ages to come. That is true, Gabson, if you want to call it for some of you. But that's true charity. When the tongues will have ceased, When tongues will have ceased. Because the Bible says, Peter says after that, he that lacketh this is blind and does not see afar off. And if you have these things, you'll not be barren, but be fruitful. Where the word fruit is required, those are works. And then he says, for an entrance shall be ministered to you into an everlasting kingdom. Huh? The moment he says a kingdom, you pack off. Yes. After you've added these things, then a, a kingdom shall be ministered. Oh, excuse me. If it's a kingdom, I've added nothing. Jesus added everything. Yes. The Bible says you are chosen in him. Yes. Then it says grow in him. Yes. Then it says you are complete in him. Yes. That's why there has to be division of the scriptures. Yes. Oh my God. I've messed up my recording, so I don't know how much time. Let me just give myself short time. Then we close. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen to what God is doing here. Israel expects someone to die to pay for them so that they can, be, they can be given a fresh chance, fresh mandate to fulfill the promise God gave them. And you people, don't be like where we are coming from, where someone would pick a small scripture that says in the evening time there shall be light. When you read the entire scripture, it says in that, Sounding a trumpet, that is a text. But the context is introduction of seven angels with the trumpets. So you must say, Revelation 8, verse 1, seventh seal. What is happening under the seventh seal? Trumpets. And in the Bible, seven seals are not even called mysteries. Never. Amen. Only one man called the mysteries to elevate himself. And we are saying, too far, no further. Amen. So you stay with the trumpets, then you come and say, and in the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had already declared to his servants, the prophets. So it is something that was already no. known. So when you come and say, it was even put there. Before the, before the earth was created. It was put there before the earth was created. And the person you claim is like, Shh. I didn't say that. 
then you come, you become devastated. He says what is being said, that I said it, I didn't say it. Because there are no mysteries in Revelation 10, 7. It's an announcement of what will follow after the sixth trumpet. And then the seventh trumpet blows. So you are staying with a text without a context, making it a pretext. Because there is no context here. But what we are saying is, when God, Jesus Christ, went on the cross, he had two people in his mind. There were others who were expecting him to die. And there is another one that even didn't know. When you went to their temple, they, were, they had even written to the unknown God. So then when Paul stood there, he told them, he's not unknown. It is the one I'm preaching. Amen. So where is he? No, he died and resurrected. So you people are not just going to believe a Jesus that came. But a Jesus who came, died and resurrected. Amen. So my life begins when the resurrected Jesus is preached. Amen. Not. That's because I'm not going to know any other man after the flesh. Amen. You people, I told you the previous time, we don't have a genealogy. Amen. Jesus came following a genealogy. Yes. And I told you, if you look at Joseph, you couldn't even call Joseph a relative of Jesus. In which way? Joseph was supposed to be the king of Israel. You know that? Yes. Because he came from the tribe of David. But because God had cast Jeconiah, and he says no one will sit on the seat from this house. That's why Joseph never was a king. He was a carpenter, yet with a throne on his head. Amen. Joseph was supposed to be a king. Because he was the genealogy of David. And Mary was supposed to be a queen. Because in Bathsheba, the wife of David, after Uriah, she gave David how many children? Four. One son was the lineage of Mary. Another son was the lineage of Joseph. And then they came and met. All of them are thrown people. Amen. The queen and the king. But God said, I'm going to do something traumatic. I'm only going to borrow your womb. And you, you you'll start connecting yourself to this son by the virtue that you are the one that is married to Mary. But if someone tells you, how is Jesus the tribe of Judah? And you say, because Joseph was from the tribe of Judah. Then when you say that, Jesus ceases to be the son of God. Then Jesus ceases to have been born miraculously. But you have now to justify that by saying, Mary was from the tribe of Judah. She carried Jesus. And then he followed that lineage. When he followed that lineage, no other person would benefit. Oh God, I want to finish. No other person would benefit because that's what Kayafa is saying. We shall go into little leaders in the afternoon. Kayafas prophesied one man must die for the nation. We've already described what death would do to a man. And how Jesus Christ bundled death. And took death to the place it's supposed to be. It is not going to wake up. Amen. Death is waiting to die literally. In the, in the lake of fire. Now guys, you join me. We want to stand there, wherever we shall be, to see death dying. Amen. Oh God. Amen. That has tormented us. But Jesus Christ never took away death. He took away sin. Amen. That I can carry death and it doesn't do me any harm. Amen. Then I can see the benefit of the people on earth and the people in heaven. Amen. Oh God, be merciful to us. Amen. These people, when Jesus spoke to them, before he mentioned you are coming, he came and told them, now go ye into the whole world. Teach all the nations. I want to end there baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Did he say that? Yes. Teach who? Was he giving them something that was never promised them in the Bible? 
or it was the promise that Israel would teach the nations. Israel was supposed to carry the blessings of the nation, not the bride, in that sense of the word that has been taught before. He was not supposed to carry your blessing. He was supposed to carry the blessings of the nations. And that's why they're given the gospel of the kingdom. And that's when Jesus Christ talked about the end. He said, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached Amen. to all nations. Amen. But in the day of Pentecost, you will demonstrate how that will be. Are you ready? Amen. You know, I was reading a scripture in Isaiah chapter 60 or 61. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise and shine, for thy light has come. There will be darkness and cross darkness, the face of the earth. But the, sh the Lord shall rise upon you, and the Gentiles shall come into their light. That verse that follows is not mentioned. So that these alone can be preached and then twist the mind of the people. The person that is supposed to rise, who is supposed to be the light of the nations, is Israel. Amen. That's why the Gentiles are supposed to come to the light. Yes. And then Israel was given a language. Let me demonstrate this very fast. Because I have to finish somewhere right there. If uh, my time realizes, what time is it? A quarter to twelve? Praise the Lord. Let's stand up. <laughs> that you could believe today the death of Jesus Christ did not only come to benefit Israel, it came to benefit you. This is one death, but two achievements for two people. And that's how when Paul came, he preached death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. When Peter was there, he was preaching death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. When Jesus Christ resurrected to Peter, it was something very important. Amen. He says now he is resurrected, that he may sit on the throne of his father David. Amen. Now, but Paul says he resurrected, that he may save a people, a body of Christ. Amen. This one is saying he resurrected to sit on the throne. For us, he didn't resurrect to sit on the throne. Amen. The Bible tells us he resurrected for our justification. Amen. But for them, he resurrected to sit on the throne. Amen. And that's why it was not foreign for Simon Peter to ask Jesus, is this the time now that you've resurrected? Is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? But he said, he didn't commit himself. God has that in store. And then he shut up. He couldn't talk about you. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace. Amen. Amen. That you are so hid that Jesus himself was not permitted in, in the flesh to talk about you. Amen. He was on this side and the people identified themselves with Jesus. When he died and resurrected, he crossed over to your side. Yeah. And then now you have got Jesus on this side and they have now no one. From that time to where, when the rapture takes place, will take 2,000 years. Amen. And then when the rapture takes place, they will have to wait for seven more years for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. But you have already been raptured. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. That you have already been raptured and they are waiting for the one to come. And then the Bible says they shall say, this is him that we've been waiting for. Amen. But I want to tell you, right now they do not know the work of Jesus. Amen. They do not know why Jesus has not come. And that's why the children of Israel as a nation are waiting for him to come. Amen. But when, he, when he, they hear, he's been here. And he did a work. When these people will be standing there, that he say, I actually came. And all this time, where have you been? Another politician, not a politician, a rabbi was asked a question. He was told, they say you conservatists. Israel say you love them because you love Israel. 
But they say you rabbis don't believe in Jesus Christ that he came and he died. And the rabbis say that's not a big deal. When he comes, we shall ask him, is this the first time you are coming or you've been here before? <laughs> Jesus came and did a secret work. And you are the secret work somewhere that no one can explain. Amen. 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 Israel, if they look into their program, they don't see how you come in. They are only waiting and saying he is going to tarry. You remember Jesus Christ told them and he tarried. You are the people that have come in after he tarried. He has no reason to tarry. The only reason he got another assignment that was a program hidden God. And you are the people Amen. that delayed the program of God for Israel. Amen. And you have to be introduced to them. Amen. That you know what? I don't believe in wasting time. Amen. I was working and here is a people. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And that's why when Caleb was saved, because he followed the God of Israel. Amen. And he was a Gentile. Amen. And he was given a mountain. And that's not even you. That is only a nation. But for you it's so secret. Amen. And that's the work that Jesus has been doing. Amen. To present himself a body. And that's why the word body of Jesus is not found anywhere in the Bible. But only in the gospel of, of Paul. Amen. You are the secret that was hidden in God. Since the world began. Amen. And then that sacred has come on earth. Amen. Now you people are going to be healed. Amen. You people who are going to get every promise from God. Amen. How can you explain that to a Jew? How did you come in? How can you keep God on earth? When the program that keeps God on earth has been suspended. How can someone get saved today? How can someone be healed today when the channel that God was to use is blocked? You are the people. Amen. Who is a secret? You are the secret. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says they do not know you because they didn't know him. You are walking on earth veiled in a glory that no one knows who you are. That you are supposed to wait for Israel to be saved, for you to be saved. But you are saved before Israel is saved. Amen. What on earth could that, how on earth could that happen? Atuneza okoka, kable Israeli uweja okolewa. Atuneza pona, kable Israeli hawaja simama kama kuhani. Amazing grace. Amen. Amazing grace. That God is more concerned about you than is concerned about anything else. You are the only person that is keeping Jesus Christ on earth today. Otherwise, Israel is no more. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the song is that say a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I was great that all my heart to fear and grace my fears really in the mighty name of Jesus. There is another life in the human body greater life than life itself. A life that is being manifested today 
that was never, never manifested before. A life that sin cannot touch, a life that cannot go away because of disobedience. Because disobedience is something that runs in death. But death shall not reign. Sin shall not have dominion over you. That there could be people on earth today that death cannot touch. Sin cannot touch. Because the Bible says, He took our sin that we may become the righteousness of God. Amen. Where did sin go? Jesus took it. Amen. And the Father, our people on earth today, Amen. executing the office of the purpose Amen. that was hid in God before the foundation of the world. Amen. Father, we come before you to say thank you. Amen. Bless your people today. Amen. Father, as we are going to this break, Lord, Amen. manifest yourself to the people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.